Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to give all the praise, all the glory to the almighty power and strength of the 12 tribes of Israel and the Son of the Most High, to whom all the praise and glory is due. Not long ago, I did a video called The Real Pocahontas Was Black. And it got a few scoffers and, a, and quite a few non-believers, but at the same time, there were a few people that actually know and understand that this information is true, that did um, comment on the video and, and let it be known that they were actually descendants of the Pamunkey and the Mattapanai tribes that are actually of Negroid people. So I want to just prove with, further with some book references and a few photos and, and a little bit of history and some other people that are claiming to be uh, descendants of these Virginia Algonquins, or these, the Powhatan Indian Confederacy. So I want to show and prove with this part two even further that the real Pocahontas was a so-called black woman. Okay, but first I want to I want to go into maybe proving with a little bit of I guess Google Pocahontas tribe. What tribe is she from? A lot of people still don't know that. I've made a reference to uh, the tribe being a the Powhatan tribe. I had people uh, scoffing at me saying that Powhatan was the name of her father and and, and wasn't a tribe. So we're gonna first. I'm gonna I want to go into this and where it says uh, in July 2015 the Pamunkey Indian tribe, descendants of the Powhatan chiefdom of which Pocahontas was a member, became the first federally, federally recognized tribe in the state of Virginia. So the Pamunkey Indian tribe, of which Pocahontas was a member. Okay. It says here, um, in 1907, Pocahontas became the first Native American to be honored on a U.S. stamp. She was a member of the inaugur inaugural class of Virginia women in history in 2000. In July 2015, the Pamunkey Indian tribe, it just says the same thing that I had previously read. Pocahontas was a member of. This is Langston Hughes, which I'll refer back to here in a minute. Uh, Powhatan, Powhatan, falls in a current of river, of water, excuse me, falls in a current of water, is what Powhatan, I guess, means. Uh, but it says part of a group of Algonquin speakers from North Carolina to New Jersey, known as Renapi, or human beings, or Lenape in the L dialect. The Powhatan tribes... Renapi of Virginia were, were culturally intermediate between the southeast and northeast regions. Powhatan was also the main tribe and village of the roughly 30 tribe Powhatan Confederacy. Other prominent tribes included the Pamunkey, Chickahominy, and the Mattapanai. The location of Powhatan traditionally, traditionally lived in the Chesapeake Bay region of present day Virginia. Today, most live in the Delaware Valley of Pennsylvania and New Jersey, as well as in Oklahoma and Canada. Okay, so there's not very many that are really recognized as the uh, the Pamunkey tribe, but there are quite a few. Okay, now my, this reference is, I want to I make a reference to this book. It's called The Book of the Indians of North America. It's a, a compilation of details in the lives of about 500 chiefs and others by Samuel, Samuel G. Drake. Okay, even the Indian on the front of this kind of looks... Like he could be of a Negroid stock, but we're going to go further and look. Okay, this is the, the author. We're going to take a look at in, in this book. You have a portion of the book where it's called Pocahontas Saves the Life of Smith. Okay, this is the part of the book I want to take a quick look at. Where it speaks of uh, Powhatan. It says, two days after Powhatan, having disguised himself in the most fearfulest manner, he could cause Captain Smith to be brought forth to a great house in the woods. And there, upon a mat by the fire, to be left alone. Not long after, from behind a mat that divided the house, was made the most dolefulest noise he ever heard. Then Powhatan, more like a devil than a man, with some two hundred more, as black as himself, came unto him and told him, now they were friends. So Powhatan, more like a devil than a man, with some two hundred more, as black as himself okay so it's still kind of skeptical some people think that that that's that's just um i don't know maybe he had black makeup on or something okay so i've read this before in the free the free gingaskins the gingaskin tribe that were black indians were, were no longer called indians but negroes i want to make a reference to a specific book called the black indians okay the black 
Indians are a nation of people that are hidden today. That's why it's called here in the book by Lauren Katz, A Hidden Heritage, because it is actually hidden, which I'll go into later that these things are intentionally not known by many people. Like they're intentionally not telling people that there are black people who are Native Americans in America. Okay, but this book, it, it makes references to quite a few of the different Indian tribes. But I want to go into some of these <clears throat> Indian tribes. Or excuse me, I want to go into a, a page that specifically speaks about the Pamunkey Indians. Okay, this is page number 142 of the same book, Black Indians. I'm going to blow it up so you can read it yourself as well. It says, in 1843, for example, white residents of King William County, Virginia, felt their world was coming to an end. Unhinged, they said, as a slaveholding community, they petitioned their legislature to save them from what they termed a dangerous and deadly peril. At any moment, they anticipated an attack by land and sea. Their great fear was prompted by a peaceful community of Pamunkey Indians many of whom were biracial or free black men and women. Rather than clarify their dangerous actions or suspected conspiracies, whites just kept pointing to the fact they were black Indians. Now one individual can be found among them whose grandfathers or grandmothers one or more is not of Negro blood, read a petition to the legislature. Now, do you read that? that's that's some vital information right there when dealing with Pocahontas and the Pamunkey Indians that this book is telling you that they actually petitioned and made a, a petition to legislature that these black Indians were very much disturbing their peace for the simple fact that they're black. Okay, and right here it says the other whites the other white complaint charged Paul monkeys had allowed their land to become a resort of free Negroes from all parts of the country and a harbor for runaway slaves. No evidence was offered for either accusation, but whites asked Virginia's assembly to deny the Pamunkeys their tax exemption and investigate their subversion of, of Virginia. <clears throat> so they, they thought this was a, a very dangerous attack on them is the fact that there was free black people around them to where they could actually hide slaves among these people. And, and, and it kind of um, made them, these people feel like their entire world was coming to an end unhinged it said because the fact that white that these black indians could hide negro slaves and start a resistance or rebellion against the people of the land the, the whites of the land that right there was the one of the most fearful things that they feared when dealing with the negro indians but we're going to continue because that right there alone this one paragraph where it speaks of the Paul Monkey Indians being biracial or free black men and women, um, pointing to the fact they were black Indians. And it says, uh, not one individual, not one individual can be found among them whose grandfathers or grandmothers, one or more, is not of Negro blood. Very big time information right there when dealing with the Paul Monkey Indians. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> I guess I'm going to go into another section of the book is Black Indians, uh, okay, part, uh, page 238, where it speaks of Langston Hughes' great uncle. Um, it says here, name is great uncle Ron Mercer Langston, excuse me, John Mercer Langston, who was a frontier lawyer who defended the Underground Railroad agents, including his brother. Uh, Charles Langston in Ohio, okay, but the main part is that Langston Hughes also could trace his ancestry back to Pocahontas. Now, when I, um, this is Langston Hughes who could, who could trace his lineage back to Pocahontas. Now, I definitely believe that this image behind Langston Hughes could possibly be an Indian because Langston Hughes, of course, knows that he's an Indian, and I believe that he was posed. I'm not sure exactly what this image is about, but it definitely could be an Indian image. But I definitely wanted to make note that his, his uncle also was, a, a, as it says here, black Indian attorney and congressman John Mercer Langston. Like a light-skinned Negro. 
for certain. Here in 1828 definition of American, um, Ab the legend, of course, he, he knows that there are many black Indians, but it says here in 1619, John Smith, the first English explorer, described the colored people when he landed on the eastern shore of America in Jamestown, Virginia. He described Powhatan, the Algonquin chief, more like a devil than a man, with some 200 more as black as himself. So he gives reference to a book that just said the same thing that I had just read from the Native American book I had read from. But this is an entirely different book that he makes a reference to here in um, the General History of Virginia, New England, and the Summer Isles, originally published in 1624, republished in 1966. So there's more than one book that's stating that Powhatan looked black, with 200, had 200, people, 200 black people with him. A few pictures of some monkeys that I found, definitely people... Would, that would be identified as being Negro. A Mattapanai young little girl, a Powhatan Mattapanai girl. They all have a similar look as well. They all have a similar um, similar eyes and, and um, bone structure. I definitely noticed a few pictures that I did get that I could find, excuse me, that there was very many of them that kind of resembled each other. She kind of resembles the same young little Indian girl that was by the tree, if it's not her. But as well, excuse me, I want to, um, trying to get back to a different image. There's some more of these, these, um, a lot of women are claiming to be, here she is. She looks very similar, claims to be from the Mattapanai Pum Monkey Indians, <clears throat> as this young woman in the Indian dress. So they definitely have a similar type of look to themselves. And this says, uh, Pocahontas, Pomonkey, Powhatan, Virginia, Indian, before and after, from dark-skinned, copper-colored Aboriginal to high yellow red bone, the pale white European area. So they definitely have changed the image of, Powhatan, of Pocahontas over the years. This is supposed to be one of our, I guess, red bone images. I couldn't find the dark-skinned colored one, but this is, I, I believe, one of the ones that they're referring to as the red bone image. Um, the camera kind of really doesn't show it very well, but it definitely um, would be what was con would be considered a, a light-skinned black woman today. Very important, um, very important to get this understanding and how it goes into some of the biblical breakdowns of who the tribe of Dan is and how we have Negro Indians who are integrated with the slave trade. Negroes, I'm from the slave trade. I'm definitely not a Negro Indian. I'm not from the Paul Monkey Indians. I come from the people that was hiding amongst the Paul Monkey Indians, the Negro from the slave trade. That's who I come from. Now, in researching in the Bible who the Dan tribe is and doing much research about the Native American Indians and people's identity biblically, I came across these Negro Indians that my forefathers used to hide amongst. This is Chris Brown. I made reference to this in my, in my last video that... Chris Brown just found out uh, I'm from the Pomonkey tribe. Uh, wow, that's awesome. He identifies as Pomonkey strongly today. He very strongly is a he's, is an advocate and speaks all the time that he's a Pomonkey. But I'm gonna um I'm gonna refer back to this in a minute. Virginia passed two acts in, in 1682 that combined Native Americans and Africans into one category as Negroes. These are the Virginia Algonquins. These are the same Indians. These are the Indians that have been identified as Negroes. The same Indians that was feared by the white man, white people that the slaves was hiding amongst. These are the same Indians, the Virginia Indians. They, along the East Coast, the Indians were black. Along the Southeast, the Indians were black. The Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creeks, Cherokees, these are all black Indians. Pharrell, Pharrell Williams was born on his date in Virginia Beach, Virginia, the same place where Negro Indians were passed as were called Negroes, so they, he knows for certain that he's an Indian. <laughs> he's like, he, the Indians haven't been completely taken away from all their knowledge. Some of these Negro Indians who have allied themselves with the so-called uh, United States government or the so-called white man when they came, they haven't been stripped of all of their knowledge. This guy right here, I, um, if, not only is he part of the B system, is he part of um, the entertainment business who are under insiders, he knows that he is an Indian. And he doesn't even look like he would be a Negro. He has a different type of look to him as well. Um, I made a reference to this, that this guy looks like he could be LeBron James with a wig, a, perm, a permed out LeBron James or something. But the woman next to him definitely looks like this, has the same similar look as the other 
Powhatan Indians that I made reference to. These are Palm Monkey Indians. They're saying that also they're um, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as it made reference before. I want to go back to Chris Brown and finishing the Paul Monkey Indians. I want to oh, I want to show that he openly admits to be a Paul Monkey Indian. Okay, this is him from his mouth. It's not just from the image, but from him actually saying it. Okay, this is Chris Brown says he is from the Paul Monkey Indian tribe. Okay, so he says that he's from the Palm Monkey tribe openly. Okay, I'm going to turn this up because I'm not sure about the volume on this. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. <clears throat> now, how long did you know that? Uh, about me. Four years. Okay, yeah. okay, so yeah. again. So, yeah. so you didn't go in and some white dude and say, hey, you're from the Pamunkey tribe. Oh, oh yeah. no, 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 let me get that no, over. No, my family did all that. You okay, know, they did the research? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What is this on your neck? What is I, well, it's, I got you a tattoo that says neck? A tattoo that says neck? Well, I have one. It's my tribal tattoo. I'm from, um, you know, the Pamunkey tribe. And, and you know. I kind of figured that. Yeah, he's <laughs> right. right. He's Am like, no, you're from the Pamunkey tribe. Am I from the Pamunkey too? No, no. Okay, just a second. Chris Brown knows that he's from the Pamunkey tribe. Donald Trump knows that the Pamunkeys are black. He knows that uh, Elizabeth Warren, who identifies as Cherokee, the Cherokees are black. There are many black Indians in America. Do not let this miseducation of the educational system that is completely affected, infected. It has infected people with white supremacy. It has... It has deceived many people into believing that they know so much about history that they don't even know about. There's Native Americans that are calling black people all kind of stuff before identifying as Native Americans as if they're trying to take their heritage. But as the Bible says in Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's the Native Americans. The Indians that, the, so, the light-skinned Indians are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They have no knowledge that there's even black people that are indigenous. Well, some of them do, but the majority of them haven't even the slightest clue that some of the black people that are walking around calling themselves African Americans, Negroes, all kind of na different names, uh, identifying with all different types of cultures are actually Native American. That the majority of the Negroes in America today are not even from the slave trade. The majority of them were here before the slave trade. And that is an, a knowledge and his, his hidden history that has been kept from so many people for a long time. And all of these things are coming out in the last days. The Most High is bringing out a lot of knowledge of a lot of different things. And this definitely has significance in waking up to the knowledge of who the real biblical Israelites are. Because one thing that is hidden about this thing, one of the reasons why it's hidden, you can see that it's a hidden heritage, is because Negro Native Americans are a link they're a link between the brotherhood that exists between Native Americans and Negroes from the slave trade. If you got Negro Indians or Negro Native Americans, black Indians, that is a definite link in proving that Negroes from the slave trade and Native Americans are brothers. We come from the Israelites. We are the twelve. We are of the twelve tribes of Israel. So, brothers and sisters, I hope I provided a little bit more information and showing and proving exactly what I have been saying, and that we have Negro Indians in very many different tribes. But one of these tribes definitely reside uh, falls within Pocahontas tribe, the Pamunkey tribe. Just like Chris Brown says, he's a Pamunkey. There are many other Negroes that know that they're the Pamunkey tribe. That they're from the Virginia Algonquins. <clears throat> so with that being said, I also want to refer to this image right here. I, don't, I definitely don't think that this is a a coincidence that she's a her one of her friends is a raccoon. Because some of what Pocahontas has actually did, you could actually call coonery because she helped the white man establish themselves in America. Now whether or not they knew it or not, they are of a people called the Dan tribe that was foretold to help the white man. So whether she knew it or not, that spirit of 
rebellion towards the other nations and um, what you would call uh, treason or whatever you want to call it. They kind of self sold out the other Native Americans for the white man. Um, that definitely exists within Pocahontas, whether she knew it or not. And that coon that's next to her could definitely be a symbol of them knowing and understanding exactly the coonery that was going on with young Pocahontas. Because, yes, it would be considered cooning, exactly what she was doing. She spared John Smith and fell for him. Today, I identify a lot of black women with what I call the Pocahontas Syndrome. I identify them because there's a lot of black women today that are Native Americans who, instead of falling for John Smith, they have fallen for the false image of their sweet white Jesus. So very similar, very similar types of situations is Pocahontas falling for John Smith and very many black women falling for Cesare Borgia, the false image of fake white Jesus. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, I want to say shalom. I will always encourage to increase learning, increase your knowledge, and study the scriptures. All praises due to the Most High.